Um, as you can see, I've cleaned up all the centre of the engine now, and um, I'm going to take the fuel injectors out after the rebuild. So once everything's been totally done, um, I shall then use my uh, plating kit, my zinc plating kit, and I shall take it, all the injectors off. So I shall run it, make sure everything's all right, and then take the injectors off and clean them all up and sort them out. Okay, guys, um, we've been kind of I've been sort of uh, waiting for my powder coating stuff to come back. Um, it's all done in the satin finish, as you can see. Uh, I remember I, I said that I was going to silicone these on, so that if I take the plenum chamber off again, hopefully not for a long time, but if I do, uh, the silicone obviously stops these rings falling down the uh, holes on the engine, so uh, the intake. Um, so, yes, I've put those on, and then the rubbers, just new, nice new rubbers just over the top. Um, what I did was I sort of clamped them down with washers overnight while they set, and then uh, that was that. As you can see, I've been busy with the engine. I've uh, cleaned up all the centre. Um, obviously, completely different to when you last saw it. And um, replaced all of the pipes. I've just got one here to do, but basically replaced all of the pipes and um, in the engine bay area and tried to tidy things up a bit and get rid of some of the nasty joiners and things like that that didn't need to be there. Um, I've still got these to replace, but these are just air, so it's not so critical. But I've got uh, some small bore ones that I've got to do there. Uh, I thought I'd wait until I got everything back in and all the pipes connected before I replace them all. The reason for that was that um, these do bear witness, these old pipes do bear witness as to where they previously went. Um, like this one, you can see the clue there is in the bend and how it's bent up to sort of fit on there. So if you put a new pipe on, you've obviously got no reference at all and it can be a bit confusing when you're replacing lots and lots of pipes. So uh, I did the ones, the obvious ones that I knew and then the ones I wasn't sort of thought I might forget, I uh, have left until everything's back on and then I'll just do them one at a time. As you can see, I also powder coated the cam covers as well. Um, and I think it looks lovely now. It's a really, you know, totally transformed the engine bay. There'll be more detailing to do later, like I'm going to paint the back firewall black so that you don't notice um, the, uh, so that the engine really sort of stands out like a jewel in, in a setting sort of thing. That's the idea. So you, you look at the engine and nothing else. I did eventually find the source of the problem. Uh, it was the pipe that runs under there um, had a uh, on the bend had a, a corrosion in it. Um, corrosion's normally, um, corrosion normally starts on the bend anyway. Um, but anyway, there was corrosion on it. You can't really see it now because it's behind the filter, but it was that pipe that runs across the top of the engine and then down the side anyway. So I repaired that, which I'll show you the repair video. And I repaired it with some kind of rather natty welding stuff. So uh, I'll show you that. The other thing that immediately stands out is I've replaced everything with stainless steel. I've got these rather lovely nuts in stainless, um, not, the, not the horrible kind of you know, steel ones that just rust in no time at all. Um, and uh, obviously stainless, everything's been put back with stainless right away across the top of the engine, right way across there, you know, everything. So I've done everything in stainless. Uh, the next up thing is once everything, once the engine's running and everything's fine, I shall take the injectors out and um, uh, anodize them, or oh, sorry, uh, um, uh, not anodize them. Yes, I shall take the injectors out and um, uh, zinc plate them, and uh, then they will look as they would have done from the factory. It's a cold process, so you don't have to worry about melting the pipes, it's just electrolysis. But I wanted to get the engine running and everything okay first. I think if you do too much, uh, too quickly, uh, you know, you can sort of lose track of things and I'd rather do it one thing at a time. Um, obviously, if the engine was out being rebuilt or something, then, uh, you know, you do everything. But um, uh, I thought I would just do it bit by bit. I think you remember there's a loose injector there. I'm just going to sort of silicon that just for now, just temporarily. I've got all the rubbers and everything, but I shall just put some silicon around there, stop it leaking run the engine, like I say, and then do some any diagnosis, any faults or anything from there. But hopefully everything should just be perfect. Now you see the benefit of um, attaching these now like I did with silicon, because it uh, makes life a whole lot easier. There you go, look at that. 
one of the things uh, I made was a spanner. Obviously, you saw that I sort of uh, slimmed it down a lot and made it uh, much uh, thinner to help me get into the difficult ones around the front here. I've also made a little tiny short one as well. That's really useful for getting in tiny places. Um, so don't be afraid to sort of make uh, tools from existing tools because, I mean, as we know, tools nowadays are pretty cheap. So you can kind of cut them up and bend them and cut slots in them and all sorts of things to make them fit better. I mean, in an ideal world, I think this spanner actually could be bent a little straighter and then it would, it would get in there better. But it's OK, it's doing the job. OK, it's one flat at a time, but um, it is doing it. Um, I have put nylocks on this time as well, which are slightly taller. Um, and that was so I didn't have to mess around with washers and things. I don't like sort of having washers everywhere. Um, you know, spring washers on the underside here, just in case they fall in somewhere where you don't want them to. Um, so I've just kept it nice and simple and put nylocks on the back here, and there's no reason not to. So, um, and they're stainless steel, of course. Everything back with stainless makes life so much more, more easy. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I've connected up the plenum chamber and all the, all the various ancillaries and everything like that. Um, so uh, before I put the engine cover on, I'll just um, give it a go and make sure it's all okay. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be uh, fine. Uh, and then I can test my flat floor pan, which is the next thing. There you go, guys. It's warming up nicely now. Always get a bit of smoke coming off when you've done this. You know, you always spill oil down the rear of the exhausts. Eventually it burns off. If it doesn't, then your cam covers are leaking. Lovely sound of a Ferrari singing. Ha ha ha!